I think it's about time for some updated thoughts on this incredibly expensive laptop. I've just returned from CES in Las Vegas, which is why I still look like this and sound like this and still have a chapstick by my side. If you know, you know. It's also why I wanna talk about the 14 inch MacBook Pro because I switched to this from the 16 inch MacBook Pro just before I went out to Las Vegas and it was both a very, very good idea and there's a few things that I regret. 4,000. 400 pounds. I've never spent that much money on a computer before. So if you're thinking about doing the same kind of thing and your credit card is nervously shaking in your hand, or just like me, you're thinking about going from the 16 inch to the 14 inch, this is the video to watch. But first, a very quick word from today's sponsor, and that is Trend Micro and their fantastic Cleaner One Pro. If you really value the space that you have on your Mac and you don't wanna spend an absolute fortune upgrading the SSD storage via Apple, Cleaner One Pro is an absolute no-brainer. It basically helps you sniff out massive files that you don't know are there and delete them very quickly. I remember when I first ran Cleaner One Pro on my brand new 24 inch iMac, which I'd only had for a about three weeks and it found two gig of completely pointless files. It shows exactly what junk is taking up space on your Mac and you can run either a quick clean or look at the entire system via the system optimizer. There's even a big file section which for someone like me who has lots of discarded video files on his Mac is absolutely crucial. One of my favorite things in Cleaner One Pro is the duplicate photos feature which is when you can sniff out those photos of your dog or your kid or the mountain that you've taken 13 photos of and get rid of everything apart from one. There is so much more built into Cleaner One Pro though, including a disk map so you can easily see what's in specific folders, a startup manager, app management so you can properly remove apps from your Mac, which you, well, you can do on Mac OS, but this is so much easier. And it doesn't stop there. There's even a very handy toolbar that monitors your CPU, your network usage, your memory usage. So to get control of the storage on your Mac and to keep an eye on what's going on behind the scenes, which trust me is definitely worth doing, you need to check out Cleaner One Pro. Just click that link below. Let's start with the size of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now I made quite a big thing about the 16 inch version that I was using. I was joking, obviously, it's not the size of a small country and it's not that heavy. But when you do a lot of traveling, which is what I do for this business, it's really annoying. As great as that massive MacBook Pro is, it's just too big. It feels huge in your backpack and using it on a plane, unless you travel first class, which I don't, is really irritating because it just doesn't fit anywhere. You can put it on your lap, but it feels too big and keeps bashing the person next to you. It does not fit on the on the seat tray whatsoever. It's the same thing on trains, and I even had problems in certain coffee shops putting it on a table and still being able to put down my coffee and other stuff. And I'll tell you what, to the people who were saying I was talking rubbish about that 16 inch MacBook Pro being too heavy, the difference with this in my bag compared to that one is unbelievable. So firstly, if you're thinking about switching from the 16 inch to the 14 inch MacBook Pro and you're worried that spending that money on a new laptop may not be worth it for that reason, I think it is, particularly if you do a lot of traveling. But we do need to talk about the switch from M1 Max to M3 Max. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I have a little test that I run on new Macs. And firstly, number one, it's not scientific. Number two, it's not a benchmark. Number three, you'll never see it on Max Tech. Number four, who cares? It's just a bit of fun. It's something to hang my hat on. And also, it just gives me an indication of how far we've come with each new generation. And the test is very simple. It's basically taking a piece of 10 minute footage from this camera, which is a Sony FX3, and then running it through through Final Cut Pro. And in Final Cut Pro, I do two things, a render and an export. So my M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, which was specced up as far as, well, the, the M1 Max chip was completely maxed out. The memory was 32 gig and the storage was two terabytes. That did the render and export combined in four minutes and eight seconds. So how did this brand new 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro fare against that 16 inch version? The first thing to mention is that this is once again maxed out in terms of the chip. So this has the M3 Max 
fully specced up, all the cores, everything. The memory is 64 gig. Again, the storage is two terabytes because I didn't want to remortgage my house and sell my car and my dog to afford anything more. The resulting time for all that money and let's say two and a bit years of innovation on Apple's part was four minutes. So I've shaved eight seconds off the time of a render and an export. Should I be disappointed with that? Well, not really, because that isn't the reason I bought this. I didn't expect massive performance gains. I bought this because, why did I buy this? Oh, the size, it, this, is, this is a smaller laptop, and I'm an Apple reviewer, I'm a, I'm a content creator. This, I keep trying to justify it, but anyway, I didn't buy this thing to shave eight seconds off my Final Cut Pro workflow. However, I think that time, that eight second difference, which is nothing guys, I think that reveals just how monumentally fantastic that M1 Max chip is. It was such a seismic leap in performance from the Intel generation and we're not gonna see that same leap for a long, long time. So again, if you're thinking about going from the M1 MacBook Pro generation to the M3 generation, you really have to have a good reason to do so. And more importantly, if you're thinking about going from 16 to 14 inch, there are some things you need to be aware of. As much as I love this 14 inch MacBook Pro and it has saved my back while I'm traveling, there are some downsides. And the first one is that I do miss that 16 inch display. And the reason for that is because I do quite a bit of editing on my kitchen table. So I sit there with just the laptop, no other external display, and I edit these videos. And going to a 14 inch display feels very cramped. The second thing, and I'm not sure if this is a downside really, but it's definitely worth mentioning, is the fact that I hear the fans on this much more than I did on the 16 inch version. They just seem to spin up much more regularly when I'm doing video editing and it doesn't impact performance, it doesn't bother me at all, but it might bother you and equally, it does reveal how good the 16 inch version is at dissipating heat. The other thing is that the battery life is definitely worse. A very quick caveat with this, the MacBook Pro is the best laptop I've ever used when it comes to battery stamina and that's no different with the 14 inch version, but when you compare this against the 16 inch version, this one chews through the battery quicker and it does so noticeably because I got so used to that epic battery performance on the 16 inch version that I'm worried I might get caught short with this although again I'm probably overthinking this however everything in life and certainly in tech is about compromises and those compromises I've just mentioned about this laptop are worth making but what fascinates me the most is how I'm using this Due to the size of that 16 inch MacBook Pro, I very rarely used it for anything apart from video editing. Just using it for blog posts and you know, writing emails and that sort of stuff, at worst, it felt a bit silly. And that meant that it spent most of its time in Final Cut Pro, which is that really a good use of 3,600 quid? And yes, I know this sounds like I'm constantly trying to justify this massive purchase, but the fact that this is so much more compact means that I'm already using it a lot more. The number of videos already that I've edited on this in a relatively small plane seat and on a plane seat tray is wonderful. Same goes for trains. I've been on two or three trains recently where this has not been a pain in the backside. And it sits perfectly on every coffee shop table I've sat at recently with a coffee on the same table. And trust me, for a recovering 16 inch MacBook Pro owner, that is a big deal. It's also a really satisfying laptop to carry around. I talked about this a little while ago where I mentioned the slingability of it. What I mean by that is that you can do this far easier with the 14 inch version. So the 16 inch version, it would be like, like that. I know this makes no sense, but trust me, at least three people agreed with me on this. And as a result of all of this, I'm using this for much more than Final Cut Pro. So writing, emailing, business planning, everything is being done on this. This is a bit like therapy, this video. And every night before I go to bed, I look in the mirror and I talk about how much more used this is compared to the 16 inch version, which by the way is for sale. I need to get shot of that because I need to recoup some of the spend on this and the Vision Pro headset I've just bought. Get in touch if you wanna buy my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Oh, and also the reason this is such a delight to carry around is because of this. This is the Harbour London, I can't think what it's called, I'll put the, the link down below, but this is the best laptop sleeve I've ever used. It's not cheap, but neither is this, and well, you wanna protect your expensive purchase, don't you? And the way this sits in here, it's all 
padded inside, which is what you expect, but it has these very satisfying magnets to close it with. But the way that laptop sits in here makes the slingability even more, even more slingable. Right, I am gonna get to the conclusion now before I go completely insane. Joking apart, I am very happy with my 14 inch M3 Max MacBook Pro, but I have to illustrate that I am not a typical consumer. None of us tech reviewers are, we buy loads of this stuff and we upgrade much earlier than regular people. I could have carried on using that 16 inch MacBook Pro for two, maybe three years. So if you've got an M1 MacBook Pro, don't be swayed by the bright lights of the M3 version. As mentioned earlier, even though my testing isn't up to you know benchmark standards, it does reveal that the difference in performance from the M1 to the M3 generation is very small. It's a completely different story if you have an Intel MacBook. The jump from your current machine in that case to this is huge. On that note, if you want to hear me waffle on about the 8 gigabyte M3 MacBook Pro, which everyone seemingly has set their trousers on fire about, and find out why I think they're wrong, keep watching.